हेलो एंड वेलकम टू जियोलॉजी कॉन्सेप्ट दिस इज द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ मंथ ऑफ मे करेंट अफेयर्स वेर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग इम्पॉर्टेंट अपडेट्स ऑफ सिक्योरिटी एनवायरमेंट एंड इकोलॉजी एंड सम अपडेट्स फ्रॉम साइंस एंड टेक सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ द फॉर द मंथ ऑफ मे करेंट अफेयर्स सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर आर डू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड so the first update is from the security portion about pokhran 1 mission now india is celebrating the 50 years of landmark first nuclear test that it has conducted in pokhran rajasthan which is a part of a operation called smiling buddha so this as a part of smiling buddha this pokhran 1 test was conducted on 18th of may 1974 now let's understand a bit more about pokhran 1 test So this Pokhran 1 or also known as the Operation Smiling Buddha was a first nuclear explosion test which was described as a peaceful nuclear explosion or PNE. Now what is this peaceful nuclear explosion you may ask? So PNEs are nuclear explosion for non-military purposes such as uh, your uh, uh, electricity generation from nuclear power plants, uh, space pro- uh, propulsion ro- uh, rocket engines or propulsion engines. Uh, oil and gas simulation etc so mostly for civilian purposes right civilian purposes and also when india tested this uh, its uh, or india conducted its first nuclear explosion as pokhran 1 it became the first nation apart from the permanent five or the p5 countries of united nation security council now who are these p5 countries china russia france uk and us Right so India became the first after the P5 countries in 1974 to test a uh, uh, nuclear explosion on peaceful nuclear explosion. right so the location was somewhere you uh, know secret army test range in Pokhran Rajasthan as you know and the uh, fuel that is used in this test was of plutonium right plutonium and stuff uh, it was used uh, the device that was used uh, involved the fission reaction and why is what it was important for india because at that time india had already fought three wars with its neighbors china and pakistan so 1962 china war you may know may, may have heard of it 1965 and 1970 war against pakistan so india had to uh, uh, show its credible deterrence capability to its neighbors and also it was re- uh, re- required in terms of national security as well and uh, by uh, performing this test india also demonstrated its technological prowess in nuclear research so that is all that you need to know about the propokhran test now next uh, there are some uh, military exercises and news which frequently come in your exam so there is uh, the first uh, is operation turkus or the turkus exercise between india and us special forces so from india the new, uh, national security guard or nsg took part in this exercise and us special operation forces or sofs took part in the exercise from uss bihar and it was a counter terrorism exercise right so it is a counter terrorism exercise and it was recently held in kolkata the second one is operation sakti which is also the seventh edition of operation sakti this time held in meghalaya it is jointly performed between india and france military forces right so sakti was between india and france and turkus is between india and us special forces right moving on let's talk about some of the important development from the field of <coughs> environment so as per the international cryosphere climate initiative or icci venezuela may, may be the first nation to lose all of its glacier so currently the humboldt glacier or the la corona glacier in venezuela is the last standing glacier which is in the andes and it has also shrunk to a size that no longer qualifies the glacier criteria right so the size of it are reduced to such an extent that uh, the icci said that this is no longer can be termed as a glacier right so what is this icci icci is a network of experts researchers who collaborate with different governments and organization to preserve earth's cryosphere right the ice sheets as you know cryosphere includes snow and ice caps on land ice caps and glaciers permafrost and sea ice as well Now you know that glacier is uh, so, something that moves over the land very slowly and due to the recent events of glacier melting which has uh, intensified in the recent decade because of the ongoing global warming 
and also the warming of ocean water and due to all these things the al alpine uh, glacier which are existing in hindu kush himalaya and also the ice sheets of antarctica have been impacted right and due to this the uh, um, the, the consequences like sea level rise biodiversity biodiversity loss and glacial lakes lake house outburst events are also been frequent right so this is the important development about the recent icci report which says that venezuela may be the first nation to lose all of its glaciers right so this is an alarming situation for everyone everyone around the world moving on in terms of renewable capacity india is now the world's third largest solar power generator or producer so recently india surpassed japan so in japan was the third uh, largest solar producing uh, country but now india is the world's third largest solar power generator in 2023 this was uh, estimated in 2023 and china and usa are the leading one right the major producer ahead of india now india has the largest uh, third india is the large third largest solar power generator but in terms of installed capacity india ranks fifth while japan is the third still in the third position in terms of installed capacity but in terms of generation india becomes third right and also there is a report called global electricity review report 2024 which uh, reviewed the uh, global electricity the global uh, renewable electricity report uh, electricity dynamics it said that there is a 30% global electricity surge uh, which is mostly contributed from the renewable energy so the 30% of global electricity for the first time comes from renewable energy in 2023 and the largest share of that goes to the solar so solar is leading the global transition to renewable energy right and also india is the uh, india contributed to 5.9% of global growth uh, annually in during this period this 2023 period and as you know india aims to decarbonize its power sector right and it wants to reduce the uh, coal use and carbon intensity in this power uh, sector and due to which india has placed that it will install by 2023 it will install 50% of its renewable energy and it will transition to net zero by 2070 and it also targets that 500 gigawatt of renewable energy capacity to be installed by 2030 so 500 gigawatt of re uh, renewable energy capacity by 2030 and by 2030 50% of energy will come from renewable sources and by 2070 india will transition to a net zero e emission economy right so this is the uh, development about india becoming the third largest solar power generator now <coughs> some archaeologists from ashoka university they recently unearthed a prehistoric artifact from the fossil made made from fossil wood so that the artifact that they have discovered is made from fossil wood which was found at national fossil park in gogua in madhya pradesh now what is this gogua national fossil park it is located in dindori district of Mah madhya pradesh and it is uh, it, it, it it was established as a national park in 1983 right and it is uh, uh, situated in a tropical dry deciduous landscape th and that is why it uh, boasts a large amount of fossilized plants which date back to 40 to 150 million years ago right and it has various woody plants like uh, uh, the fossils of woody plants like eucalyptus date palm neem as well as climbers right like leaves flowers fruits and even most importantly dinosaur egg fossils are discovered from this gogua uh, national uh, fossil park from madhya pradesh right so you need to un un remember the name of this uh, fossil park and where is it situated right moving on from the science and technology field the startup agni cool cosmos which was incubated by iit madras was success successful in launching world's first single piece 3d printed rocket engine in the rocket their rocket called agni 1 sorted right so they they were successful in launching the aircraft which is agni 1 and a single piece 3d printed rocket engine in that right now let's talk about what is this agni 1 sorted So this Agni One sorted is called sorted stands for sub sub orbital technological demonstrator, right? And it is India's first semi cryogenic engine powered rocket launch flight. So the rocket is powered by semi cryogenic engine, and the rocket itself is called Agni One sorted because it is a sub orbital technology demonstrator flight. Now, what is sub orbital flight? You may ask. 
suborbital flight is a flight which flights up to a very high altitude even uh, higher than the uh, the regular flights and it moves up moves to a height which is very high but it is not that high to place the vehicle into earth's orbit right so not completely in the space in the earth's orbit but to a very high altitude right and the uh, the engine that has been de designed has been uh, uh, done with the help of additive manufacturing and 3d printing right so this is the technology that is used in the uh, designing of the engine of agniban rocket where uh, from where it is launched it is launched from the india's first privately developed launch pad the first privately de developed launch pad dhanush which is established by agnikul itself in srihori kota of andhra pradesh right and it is also supported by the launch is supported by isro and in space which is the commercial arm of isro right and it can uh, 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 carry payload up to 100 kg to a height of 700 km which is in the low earth orbit right so this is all about the agniban which is developed by agnikul cosmos right now china china's chang'e 6 mission is successfully launched and it is it is a successful launch and it aims to collect rocks from the far side of moon right that is from the south pole of moon right so chang'e's uh, chang'e 6 mission is to um, go to the moon's far side that is the um, south pole of the moon which is very hard to uh, uh, land a rocket in right and it wants to uh, retrieve 2 kilograms of sample and come back to earth for for the study right uh, the previous mission which was the chang'e 5 mission was mostly to bring back a uh, samples from the near side of the that is the north pole of uh, the moon in which was launched in 2020 right and it will land in the south pole's atkin basin which is moon's largest impact base and it also includes one of one very uh, small or micro satellite you can say a cube sat known as i cube q which was developed by the pakistan space agency right so this is the information that you need to understand as far as the china's recent chang'e 6 mission Answer. Now, WHO has pre-qualified a new dengue vaccine called TAC003 or TAC003, which was developed by Takeda from the Jap uh, from Japan, right? Japan's uh, there is a Japan's research institute called Takeda, which is which developed this dengue vaccine called TAC003, which is a live attenuated dengue vaccine. That means it has a weakened version of four weekend version of four serotypes right weekend version of four serotypes of dengue viruses right so what is the meaning of pre qualification so when uh, who pre qualifies something some vaccine or some drug it recommends uh, that 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 um, a dub, um that un the united nation can procure this medicines so it it qualifies for the quality test of the un procurement that un can procure this med medicines for uh, distribution in uh highly affected areas right and it this particular vaccine has been approved for children aging between 6 to 16 in high burden areas right so what are the four uh, virus serotypes they are mostly named as dn1 dn2 3 and 4 right so the, this is dengue is mostly a viral disease and it is transmitted by infected mosquitoes mostly the aedes mosquitoes right and the high load can be seen in asia africa and and the latin americas where the tropical climate is dominated right so this is all about the dengue vaccine now last but not the least that european union has finalized world's first comprehensive law that will regulate artificial intelligence which is also known as the ai act previously you may know that uh, uh, the european union has passed the gdpr act that is the global data privacy law and this time it came up with a comprehensive act known as artificial intelligence act now it's what does it do the artificial intelligence act it what it does is it sets strict rules for the application of ai into various spheres of society and it also categorizes them based on the risk profile right now so there are high risk low risk and unacceptable items in the list so the high risk ai systems such as the autonomous vehicles medical devices um, um and uh, face evaluation they face stringent evaluations right 
so they are facing stringent so high risk ai system will will go through a strict a strict and stringent evaluation criteria now there are certain applic certain application of ai that are deemed as unacceptable like social scoring system predictive policing and emotional recognition which are prohibited they are completely prohibited in the act right and when a company will violate this act this is particularly applied for the european union only and not to the entire world right so it will be only applicable in the european union territory and after this uh, ai act if any company violates this norm they will face a severe fine up to 35 million euros or up to 7% of their annual global revenues right and why this act was enacted this is to ensure that the trust transparency and accountability is still there while this in this uh, new era of generative ai systems right and it also wants to protect the copyright laws and will also under uh, the app, the application and the app, app developers will undergo routine testing through this app so that is all that you need to know as far as the month of may part 2 is concerned we have we are done with the month of may and we'll again resume from the month of june current affairs so i hope you have found something useful from this video i'll see you in the next one thank you again